Polly Draper is an actress, writer, producer, and director. She's best known for her role on ABC's groundbreaking primetime television series, 30-something, for which she received an Emmy Award nomination. And she's currently at Bay Street Theater in Sag Harbor, starring in My Brilliant Divorce, a play by Geraldine Aaron. The show runs through June 24th, and we're very happy it has brought her to the East End and to the afternoon show here on BAZ. Polly Draper, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it is my pleasure. So you started out in the theater. Yes. Um, what was your very first job, very first professional job? My very first theater professional job was a play. I was still in drama school, and it was a play called Split by Michael Weller, and it was at Second Stage. And uh, it was a big hit, and it sort of infected me, too. Oh, actually, that isn't even true. I was in – I went to Yale Drama School, and I was in the Yale Rep production of Barry Child. That was my first professional job. Wow. Which is a Sam Shepard play. Yeah, There's that a, was that's a wonderful play. That is a great play and it was a great part and a great it was it was the f- premiere of it, so it was a big deal. What was Yale like? Um I was there 7 years. I was there as an undergraduate and I was there at, at the drama school, so so I must have liked it. <laughs> it yeah. was uh the as an undergraduate is I was the f- only the fifth class of women, so it was very uh I'd never been in, I'd gone to an all girls school. So there was a lot of focus on me there because there weren't that many girls there. And, uh, so it was, it was, uh, it was overwhelming, but kind of exhilarating. And I acted in a lot of plays there. And then, and then when I got accepted into the drama school, I was in a class, you know, with John Turturro and Tony Shalhoub and Fran McDormand. And, you know, we were kind of, it was kind of a wonderful group. And, um, you know, they teach you that you can really do anything. So in the play that I'm doing now, the 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 woman, whenever she talks about she it's you know it's called my brilliant divorce and it's her ta- going through all the trials and tribulations of her divorce and um and as she does she she becomes all the different characters that she uh, encounters during this kind of Alice in Wonderland ride down the rabbit hole of yes. singleness yes and um all of those characters were pretty effortless for me to do because at Yale, at the drama school, we were, it was like drummed into us that we should play all different kinds of characters. And we were, you know, given you know, accent uh, coaches and uh, mo- movement coaches. And so we did lots of that kind of thing. And so I felt very safe doing that. You did a lot of character work, so to speak. We did. Yeah, yeah all of us did. And and all of us now continue to, you know, it's uh, the, the group that I mentioned is all pretty known for their character work and so that's what i loved about you well that showed i saw the uh, as you know i sh- saw the show on tuesday night yeah. which was not you say not your favorite it was uh, audience tuesday. <laughs> if you were at the audience on tuesday night shame on you shame on you you shall never be invited back. i feel i feel shamed i feel shamed i feel responsible partly uh, yeah you i didn't hear you laughing either. exactly you know right. we have had such raucous fun wonderful crowds and they've been laughing and applauding and cheering and loving it and for some reason reason tuesday night it was raining it was i don't know what it was they just were not happy to be there so yeah it happens unfortunately (laughs) but uh, my point being uh your character stuff is really funny and um it seems effortless for you it seems fun for you yeah i wasn't planning to do this until I read the script and I said, oh my God, I have to do it. It's just so much fun. (laughs) Well, how do you decide to do a project? I mean, what makes you say yes? In this case, you know, in in every case, it's the writing. Mm -hmm. Well, in some cases, it's that I, like, I just finished a movie that Steven Soderbergh directed and I love the script, but I, if it had been an awful script, I would have been thrilled to do it because I'm just think he's a genius. And I think that's part of it too. If it's being directed by a cool person, I think that they're going to figure out some way to make it great or, you know. And did Matt McGrath approach you uh, about the project? Matt and I have been (laughs) friends for years. Matt and I met because I saw him in Hedwig and the Angry Inch, which he was so brilliant 
It's so amazing. And he um, and we became friends after that. He's a terrific actor. He is an awesome actor and an awesome director. He um, but this is like one of his first directing jobs. But I knew since it's a one woman show, he would just know how to evolve it because he's such a wonderful performer himself but he did more than that he you know it's a beautiful production with so much to go for it but we've been friends he lived in the guest house of our house in LA we live no, mostly in New York but we have a house in LA and he took care of my dogs who he tells me these awful stories my I had a I had a sort of a I had sort of a um um what's it called when a family is uh his family isn't you know they don't fit together what's that called it, it uh, you know a dysfunctional oh My dysfunctional, dysfunctional family, of course. family yes of three stray dogs who used to fight not only with each other but other dogs and used to you know one of them beat up dogs in the dog park and that didn't one of them was on prozac <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah. you had a dog on prozac yeah i know i'm so sorry funny. anyway so matt had to take care of those dogs so anyway we bonded over many many things one of them being I talk on he, he provided some counseling. He, I take it. Yes, exactly. So he directed. So he called me and asked if I would do this. It was actually supposed to be Mercedes Rule in it, and she couldn't do it. And so he s- thought I would be the, you know, a great choice. And so he, and I'm so glad he did. And I, I said, Oh, Matt, I don't think I can do it. It's just, it sounds too, it sounds like too much work and it's a bad time and stuff and then i started reading i said oh i hope you didn't give it to anyone else oh i want to do it (laughs) matt mcgrath of course directed this production of my brilliant divorce at bay street theater um again you've done so much theater do you get more satisfaction out of being on stage than behind a camera no no i like every single bit of it anything that's creative and fun and what no i i was surprised by how much i loved directing i loved uh and 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 i love writing that's been um a a really new discovery for me that um writing the naked brothers band it's had a lot of success yeah it was a it's a it was a really really fun show we'll get to it i promise uh it's 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 on my list of things (laughs) to talk about Uh, my guest is actress polly draper and she's currently starring in a one-woman show at bay street theater it's called my brilliant divorce and uh, it's running through june 24th and for more info you can go to baystreet.org if you're getting a divorce come see this show i I was just going to ask you you've been divorced in real life Mm -hmm. and in this play your character angela as you said is going through the dissolution of her marriage and yeah. she's conflicted about it you know she's sort of struggling to let go but at the same time she f- feels this newfound freedom like yep. this emancipation yep. from the confines of the institutions I of marriage that's right. yeah. um could you relate to that can you relate oh, to that i totally could i mean um that's why i'm in a happy marriage now because i think i went through that i think um i think it's really about a woman that feels um suffocated by the the overbearing man in her life and i think that she doesn't even know it until he leaves her she's she's just going about the marriage thinking this is what she's supposed to do and then and then once he leaves her and she's sort of at sea and at loose ends and feeling you know horrible she comes to her own and and figures out who she is. And I think that that's, that's a very common thing with women. It's, um, the, the thing that's great about this play though, is it's so funny, except Tuesday night (laughs) where nobody laughed. And, um, she has such a great wry sense of humor about it. This writer who's adorable. She's this wonderful British woman who is just, has been through it herself. And, Mm -hmm. and, she talks about the, I mean, the character, she calls her husband roundhead because she, re, you know, she realizes he, it's really annoying how round his head is. She sort of discovers afterwards. And once he's left her, she's like, you know, I was, I was kind of happy that he left just because he really has an annoyingly round head or something like that. <laughs> right. Well, I said to her, is any, the, is any of this true? And she said, um, well, my husband does have a, quite a round head.